Hello, this is Dr. David Green with R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic is amniotic stem cell therapy for knee pain. Let's look at the different types of knee pain. Most commonly, it's arthritis. Uh, degenerative wear and tear arthritis is also called osteoarthritis. Also, post-traumatic arthritis after a car accident or a sports injury. And then you have the autoimmune types, such as rheumatoid and psoriatic. And then you also have knee pain coming from soft tissue injuries, such as ligament tears, uh, either partial or complete from the ACL, the PCL, or one of the collateral ligaments, and then tendonitis, such as runner's knee, meniscal injuries, which can either be degenerative or traumatic, and then you have miscellaneous causes, such as instability of the patella, IT band syndrome, etc. So the traditional treatment options, there have been quite a few. None of these are designed to fix the knee pain condition. They're really just designed to relieve pain, such as anti-inflammatories, uh, pain medication, whether they're oral or topical, a brace or a cane, uh, cortisone injections, which is steroid, and then one of the new treatments is radiofrequency ablation, which actually works well. It kind of deadens the geniculate uh, nerves, which are simply sensory, but they eventually grow back. So there are some possible repair uh, scenarios, which are in the traditional treatment options, such as physical therapy can help to strengthen you know, some of the uh, damaged or atrophied areas uh, and help improve blood flow uh, to the knee. And then hyaluronic acid, which is Synvisc, has some theoretical benefits of repairing some cartilage and other uh, anatomy. Now here's um, hyaluronic acid. There's uh, brand names such as Synvisc or um, Suparts or Synvisc. And that's basically hyaluronic acid, which is uh, manufactured from a rooster comb, and that's been FDA approved since the early 2000s. Um, it was shown in large studies to be very effective. The effectiveness has not proving out to be long term, so some insurance companies are actually pulling away coverage. Now, when you start looking at regenerative medicine, that is the new paradigm. That's the non operative treatment that can actually repair damaged tissue and regenerate. It's low risk outpatient, effective, and isn't that what medicine has been looking for for all these years? Something that doesn't involve surgery that can actually help repair the problem at hand? I mean, consider this. 20 years ago, plastic surgery was 90% operative. But now, with the advent of all the fillers and other injections, it's 90% non-operative. So it only stands to reason that as these uh, treatments come to light, the paradigm changes um, in the musculoskeletal world. So let's look at the op options available right now for in the regenerative therapy field. PRP therapy is a simple blood draw uh, of 30 to 60 cc's. The blood is spun in a centrifuge quickly for 15 minutes. It concentrates the platelets and growth factors, and then that concoction is injected into the problem area. Bone marrow uh, derived stem cell therapy is where uh, a needle is put into one's bone marrow, usually in the iliac crest of the hip, um, and then it's processed immediately and injected. And then adipose is simply taking 30 to 60 cc's of one's fat um, and also uh, processing it immediately and injecting it. And then the newest is amniotic-derived stem cell therapy. It's not really new. It's been used for decades in other fields outside of musculoskeletal, such as ophthalmology and wound care, um, especially in Europe. So let's look at amniotic stem cell therapy. It has really, truly been a remarkable addition to regenerative medicine. The amniotic fluid is obtained from consenting donors after a scheduled C-section. So it's not from an amniocentesis. This is after a scheduled C-section. All right. The baby's fine. Um, the mother's consented. She's compensated. The hospital's compensated. There's no you know, backdoor deals going on. Everybody signs consent form. The Fluid is sterilely taken to an FDA-regulated lab, and it's processed according to current good tissue practice standards. Um, the labs that we use from R3 are AATB certified, American Association of Tissue Bank. And then once completed, the uh, processed amniotic fluid is cryogenically frozen until it's ready for use. There's no embryonic stem cells or fetal involvement involved. Now, when you look at the qualities of amniotic fluid, it is amazing. First of all, it's immunologically privileged. So once you process amniotic fluid from a, a donor and then you inject it into somebody else, it does not cause a rejection reaction. 
all right? It also has a lot of growth factors in it, way more than PRP. PRP has about seven in it. Um, amniotic fluid ha probably has over 30 at least. There is hyaluronic acid in it, so the same benefits you would get from, say, a synvisc injection, you do get from amniotic. Depending on how it's processed, there may be a lot of stem cells in the fluid, especially if it's not sterilized uh, by gamma radiation, but it definitely has stem cell activators in it, which prompt your own stem cells to come into the area of where it's injected. It's also antimicrobial, so the incidence of infection is really, really, really low. Um, and then it's non-steroidal, so you're not looking at potential cartilage degradation like you are with a cortisone treatment. Now the protocol, the amniotic fluid stays on dry ice or in a cryogenic freezer until it's ready to use, okay? It's thawed out for about five to 15 minutes. And then um, it's usually one cc per knee and it's okay to dilute it three or four to one with sterile water, saline, or lidocaine. So you take one cc, you dilute it, you end up with four cc's that get injected, okay? The procedure is quick, it takes less than an hour. Now, what are the outcomes? Well, amniotic fluid may be a safe and effective alternative to hyaluronic acid for osteoarthritis pain. That is a paper that was presented at, last year at the American Academy of Pain Medicine that showed greater pain relief at four months than at one month in you know, 170 patients, all right? So that was 82% obtained good to excellent relief at four months, which is much better than hyaluronic acid injections, all right? Um, that study is being continued, uh, and there's been quite a few other small pilot studies and individual case reports that have been positive for knee pain relief uh, for both arthritis and for soft tissue injury, um, with patients being able to avoid surgery, get back into athletics quicker, um, without having to go through a lengthy rehab. Now, what are the risks? Well, the risks have been absolutely minimal. There has not been a rejection reaction because of the immunologically privileged nature of it. It's non-steroidal. It's antimicrobial, so the risk of infection has been minimal. There are differences in how practices and doctors will uh, inject the material and then um, what they tell them to do afterwards. Uh, most say, you know, just do activity as tolerated. Others will minimize activity and have them go through a physical therapy regimen. We don't know exactly what's best. We do know that the risk factors are extremely low for amniotic therapy. Coverage. Uh, currently, amniotic stem cell, stem cell therapy for knee pain is an out-of-pocket expense. Insurance will cover the visits, the imaging, the lab work, but not the amniotic material. If people try and tell you otherwise, they might be putting a code in that is not quite uh, appropriate. So it is covered during surgery if it's used in a spinal fusion or something uh, where it can be used as an allograph code, but not during a standalone knee injection. Okay, just it's new technology. It takes a while to capture reimbursement from Medicare, Blue Cross, so on and so forth. The bottom line is that amniotic therapy works well in over 80% of patients, and early research shows that it's better than hyaluronic acid treatment, which is Synvisc. There's no embryonic stem cells or fetal involvement. The process is low risk, it's high benefit, and it does have live cells depending on the processing. It can help you and your loved ones avoid surgery and get back in the game fast. If you're an athlete, you have to consider the time it takes to go through surgery and rehab, and you, know, you might be out for the whole season. With this type of treatment, you may be able to get back before the season's out. Our three partners with the top providers nationwide to offer regenerative treatments for all types of musculoskeletal conditions. We're talking about the knee, hip, shoulder, ankle, elbow, wrist, even for uh, migraines, um, tennis elbow. It's not just uh, uh, joint injections. And this also includes spinal conditions for the back and neck. It's been showing great results for degenerative disc disease. Visit us at r3stemcell.com and then call us to find a treatment center at 844-GET-STEM. I'm Dr. David Green for R3 Stem Cell. Thank you for watching.